This video is the second part of the previous video, The Twelve Tribes of Ishmael. If you haven't seen that video, you can watch that video by visiting our channel. Now, let's delve into some lesser known details about the descendants of Ishmael. According to the biblical narrative, Ishmael's firstborn son was named Neth, making him the eldest. The name Neth carries a prophetic connotation, as mentioned in the book of Genesis, where it is stated that he would be the father of twelve princes. In Aramaic, Neth signifies prophecy or being associated with prophecy. Available information suggests that both the tribe of Keter and the tribe of Neth, descendants of Ishmael, gained prominence in sheep breeding, as referenced in Isaiah 67. The names of Keter and Neth frequently appear in ancient Assyrian records. The historian Josephus identified the people of his time, known as the Nans, as descendants of Ishmael's eldest son, Neth. He stated that the Nans inhabited a vast region extending from the Euphrates River to the Red Sea, which became known as Nabatea, the land of the Nans. Flavius Josephus also mentioned that he acquired information about these people directly from the Nans, as he had the opportunity to interact with them. It is intriguing to note that the Nans spoke the Nabataean language, a variant of Aramaic. The tribe of Keter is frequently mentioned in Assyrian records, including accounts from Tiglath-Pileser III and other Assyrian kings. Tiglath-Pileser III, an influential Assyrian king who reigned from around 745 to 727 BC, is known for his conquests and reforms that had a significant impact on the Assyrian Empire and the history of the ancient Near East. The Keterite and Nethian tribes were primarily composed of merchants engaged in the trade of spices, ceramics, and similar products. As for the tribe of Adbeel, it is often associated with the tribe of Elu, originating from the land of Arubu, which came under the rule of Tiglath-Pileser in 744 BC. Elu was the Aramaic form of the Nabataean name, which, when translated into English, would be similar to Abdallah. Historians suggest that the tribe of Elu inhabited the Sinai Peninsula region. Turning to the tribe of Mishma, there is an intriguing question. Did the descendants of Mishma play a significant role in the establishment of villages near Jebel Mishma? Speculation exists regarding the possibility of these two tribes having some sort of association, perhaps through marriages or mergers with the tribe of Simeon from the Israelite people. Relevant information in Chronicles 1, 24 and 1, 27 records this possibility, indicating that the two tribes may have intermingled with the descendants of Simeon during their time in the land of Egypt. This theory aligns with the abundance of resources in that region. Furthermore, some believe that the tribe of Mishma eventually integrated and disappeared from history due to their fusion with the tribe of Simeon. As for the tribe of Duma, Biblical records mention Duma as a city in Canaan, as described in Joshua 15.52. It is also associated with Edom and Seir in the book of Isaiah. Historians generally identify Duma as being related to the people of Adadu, which would refer to the tribe of Duma itself. In one account, Ezar Haddon described his father Saqib facing the capital of Adadu in his attempt to subdue the Ishmaelite tribes. With the Arabs considering it a stronghold of the Arabs, Saqib captured H.A. Day, the king of Adadu, who is also referred to as the king of the Arabs. Additionally, an inscription by Urbanipal mentions Hale as the paramount king of the Kites, indicating that the Ishmaelite tribes had a central ruler although they may have also had their own tribal leaders. Regarding the tribe of Tema, it is generally associated with the ancient oasis of Tema, located northeast of the Hejaz district on the trade route between Taf, Medina, and Duma. The Nafu Desert lies between Tema and Duma, and the present-day city of T, situated at the southwestern edge of the vast Nafu Desert, is believed to have been built upon the ruins of the ancient oasis of Tema. It is possible that the descendants of Tema inhabited this region. Tiglath-Pileser III received tribute from Tema, 
as well as from other Arabian kingdoms and tribes, as recorded in ancient Assyrian records. Concerning the tribes of Jatur and Nafish, it is believed that the descendants of Jatur and Kadima actually formed a united group, including the Hagarenes. It is important to note that the Hagarenes are descendants of Hagar and not Ishmael. These tribes are situated in the Transjordan region. Additionally, it is speculated that the tribe of Kadima may have had associations with or even intermixed with the Kenite. For instance, Caleb, Joshua's renowned companion, could have been an Ishmaelite from that lineage. This is the available information about the 12 tribes of Ishmael that formed various tribal groups in the Middle East. Today, Ishmaelites can be found in different regions, including Egypt, the Gulf of Aqaba, and the Sinai Peninsula. Furthermore, there is a significant presence of Ishmaelites in Saudi Arabia, partly due to the blending of Ishmaelites with the descendants of Midian. It is worth noting that Midian is located in Saudi Arabia, and the Midianites are descendants of Midian, one of Abraham's sons with Keturah, who also inhabited the region. If you found this video enjoyable, please consider liking and sharing it. Additionally, subscribing to this channel will ensure that you receive more updates in the future. Thank you.